CCP's Deception of the World. Hello everyone, it's Michael here. We now continue our story from the last episode. When Mao died in 1976, CCP leaders built a memorial hall in Tiananmen Square to house Mao's crystal coffin. They had planned to copy the practice of the USSR and place Mao in a crystal coffin for people to worship. This plan was referred to as Project Number no. 1 at the time. According to the author Zheng Yi in his novel Su Coffin, at the time the CCP had limited knowledge in making crystal coffins and on how to preserve bodies due to the poor relationship with Big Brother, the Soviet Union. The first step in building a coffin was to choose the best crystal materials. Under the armed supervision of the army, workers of Mine 105 in Donghai County, Jiangsu Province, selected 32 tons of supercrystals, piece by piece, from tens of thousands of portions of ore and sent them to Beijing in batches by plane and train. The task of building crystal coffins was assigned to three confidential factories in Beijing, Shanghai and Jinzhou to be completed in collaboration. In the interest of safety, at first they did not dare to use natural crystals, instead they used the K9 artificial crystal trial system. Coffins number one and number two were created and then rejected, as when a body was placed in, more than one reflection of the red sun image would appear on the coffin wall. Finally, the third coffin was built successfully. As a result, workers began using expensive natural crystals to make a fourth coffin. A year after the death of Mal, the first veritable crystal coffin in human history was finally made. A fifth coffin was later made in case there was an earthquake, war, destruction, attrition or other unexpected events. It was said that the actual length, width and height of the finalised crystal coffin was accurate to one hundredth of a millimetre, less than the thickness of a single hair. To ensure trapezoidal coffin body vacuum splicing, the ratio of the plate length and width only allows for an error of one ten thousandth. In other words, the crystal coffin quartz purity was up to six nines, 99.9999%. that is, an impurity content of one millionth. It was said that no one else in the world can make this. After the crystal coffin was built, the next major problem was how to preserve Mao's body. On the day of Mao's death, his body was only generally embalmed, as it was originally intended for cremation. However, CCP leaders decided on the next day to preserve the body. This decision almost suffocated the experts who were called in urgently. For long-term embalming, the internal organs must be removed two hours after death, followed by blood vessels of the whole body, including capillaries, which must be cleaned and then injected with an embalming agent. The experts had no choice. Considering their own safety, they had to follow the order to immediately infuse the gross corpse with the conventional preservative formalin. After filling Mal's body with 16 litres of formalin, it became swollen with the embalming fluid like sweat seeping out of the pores. The body became swollen, with a big face, neck and head, with two ears sticking out. At this moment, Mao's personal secretary, Mrs. Zhang Yufeng, complained, You turned Chairman Mao into this. Would the central government approve of this? The experts had to rush to use towels with cotton pads to squeeze Mao's face and neck in an attempt to move the liquid deep into the chest cavity. One young doctor used a little more force and rubbed off a small piece of skin on the right side of Mao's face and immediately started shaking with fear. 
Luckily, an expert carefully coated it using a cotton swab stained with petroleum jelly and yellow pigment and could no longer be seen. After an extended period of netting and squeezing, the swelling on Miles' face had gone down and the two out-of-place ears were not obvious, although the neck was still quite thick. Subsequently, the treatment of the permanent preservation of Miles' corpse became a major issue. They couldn't ask their big brother, the USSR, for help, but had to turn to Vietnam. In the preservation of Ho Chi Minh's body, the Vietnamese not only mastered a full set of secret methods of the Soviet Union, but did even better. However, Vietnam was afraid of offending the Soviet Union, and so only taught the Chinese the initial technology, but for the medium and long-term effects, the CCP experts had to work it out for themselves. Xu Jingxuan, who was the secretary of the Shanghai Municipal Committee, disclosed a little-known insider story in his Ten Years a Dream, Memoirs of Xu Jingxian's Cultural Revolution, in which he mentioned that Liu Xiangping, then the Communist Minister of Health, informed Shanghai that it was necessary to find a fresh corpse in Shanghai, and turned the deceased face into a complete plaster face mould immediately after death for permanent preservation. The reason was that the body needed a standard body for comparison to observe future changes. We cannot conduct multiple mould tests on Chairman Mao's face, not to mention the slightest damage to the face. So we hope that Shanghai will take a step ahead with a fresh corpse and obtain experimental results. CCP authorities in Shanghai pulled out one of the condemned prisoners from the court and executed him immediately using a fresh corpse as a test. This was the first execution by lethal injection in China and no one knows why this man was sentenced to death or whether he was unjustly sentenced. In Beijing, initially Mao's corpse was placed in an embalming solution soaking in the underground operating room of the 301 General Hospital of the Communist Army. From September 1976 until August 1977, experts called from all over the country removed Mao's heart, lungs, stomach, kidneys, intestines, liver, pancreas, bladder, gallbladder and spleen and then soaked them separately in formalin solution. The empty shell of the torso was stuffed with formalin soaked cotton. But Mal's brain was not taken out and experts said they did not want to cut open Mal's head. Among the experts, some had experience in preserving ancient corpses. After the study of dozens of experts, it was finally decided to take a combination of liquid and gaseous phase and the remaining issues would be contemplated in the long run. The so-called combination of liquid and gas phase means that the head and hands are preserved in a gaseous state and the other parts are soaked in liquid. To prevent decay of the body, the gas phase preservation part must be isolated from oxygen. Since Mal's corpse was changing every day and every hour, the expert's task was to reduce and slow these changes to the minimum. They found the stamp method, standard colour book, which was compared to the change of hair colour. In August 1977, Mao's grave memorial hall was completed. Mao's body and several jars of offal soaked in formalin were moved to the memorial hall. Mao's body was placed into a crystal coffin. The body was preserved in the crystal coffin by a combination of gas and liquid, with the clothes wrapped in liquid and only the face in the gaseous environment. Mao's neck also inserted a tube to facilitate the infusion of formalin liquid into the Mao corpse. In Mao's grave, there was an unknown male body accompanying Mao's mummy. It was because this man's age, weight, size and the cause of death are like Mao's. So the purpose of preserving this man's body is to test any technology on this body before it is applied on Miles' corpse. 
that is, to do experiments first on this man, and if successful, then use it on Mal's corpse. Therefore, from time to time, the experts took a few small particles from Mal's body and the unknown companion and sent them to the relevant research institutions to check the preservation of the body's tissue structure. As for the name of this companion, whether it was voluntary or not, and whether the family was paid a large amount for the companionship experiment, it is still a mystery. Although Miles' crystal coffin was sealed, staff needed to periodically put their hands into the coffin to finish off Miles' clothes, and so inevitably brought in bacterial infiltration. As the body is exposed to the gaseous state for an extended period, it accelerates bacterial contamination. According to Zhu Peikang, a member of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, who participated in the preservation of Mao's corpse. In 1999, Mao's remains almost became corrupt and deteriorated, and the memorial hall was therefore closed. It was only after the repair that it was restored to its original form. Zhu Peikang believes that according to the existing technology in China, it is possible to preserve Mao's body for 50 years. But we have no way to go and ask Mr. Jewell from which year 50 years would be counted. When Mao died in 1976, Chinese society was on the verge of collapse in every aspect of life. But the CCP still spent huge sums of money to preserve Mao's corpse, build his tomb, and destroy the feng shui of Tiananmen Square. This was all for the purpose of glorifying Mao, the culprit who led the CCP to establish the government, launch countless political movements, and kill tens of millions of Chinese people in order to continue to deceive them after his death. However, we believe that as the tide of history rolls on, soon the evil CCP would not be able to affect the lives of the Chinese people. That's the end of our story. Please like and subscribe to our channel, and see you next time.